It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of February 4th, 2000. Uh, two movies in particular, so we can get to this pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and jump on on a new one. We'll start off with the biggest new release of the weekend, and that is, of course, Wes Craven's Scream 3. This is, of course, the third installment of the Scream series. It was set to be the last film in the series, but, um, well, technically it did eventually become that, for at least for 11 years, because this one did not live up to the expectations that they were hoping with this film. You basically have a story where it's three years after the events of Scream 2, and you follow Sidney, once again played by Nev Campbell, who's gone into self-imposed isolation following the events of the previous two films, but is drawn to Hollywood as a new ghost face against killing the cast of a film within the film, Stab 3. Stat Scream 3 combines the violence of slasher drama with comedy and whodunit mystery, while satirizing the cliches of film trilogies, but unlike the other previous Scream films, there is more of an emphasis on comedic elements in this installment because the violence and horror are reduced down in response to increased public scrutiny about violence in media, following the Columbine High School Massacre, which really automatically makes this less than the previous films, but... Um, it makes it even worse when you realize that Kevin Williamson, who wrote the first two films, had a five-page outline for what he wanted for two sequels to the Scream films when auctioning off his original script, hoping to entice buyers with the potential of buying a franchise. And the writer that they got for this was Aaron Kruger. Now, Aaron Kruger is a guy we've talked about before. He's written stuff for – he's written a couple of notable films from last year. Most notably, Arlington Road, but this was a film that – this was the first of – this was around the time when he was a big name, and, and he got these di various different scripts to write for. Uh, there was another one that he wrote with uh, Dimension Films, Reindeer Games, that came out in, later on in the year, but um, getting Screen 3 was a big get for him, and almost immediately he took out all the notes that Williams had had and basically just tore it up and basically – that was a problem from the get-go with this film. This film clearly did not have what Kevin Williamson brought to the table with the first two Scream films. This is a film that clearly felt like they really were stuck on what to do here, but they knew they had an idea that this was going to be the last installment of the series. And, um, you know, honestly, it really shows that this is not the way that this thing should probably should have ended. And... Um, I guess in some ways it helps that the other that screen got a re resurrection in the last couple of years, especially with the most recent films that came out this year and last year. But um, as far as this film goes, it definitely is a major, major step down from the previous film. It feels like they're just running out of ideas and basically were kind of forced to make this a trilogy in the end. It's interesting because this film took a whole different turn once they found out about the scandal with Harvey Weinstein. I'm reading on here about, like... Uh, several publications noted the parallels between Weinstein's behavior and the themes of abuse featured in the film, particularly those with Maureen Prescott, who's played by Lynn McRae. Uh, basically, they're saying, let me find it again. Here we go. The late mother of the film series protagonist, Sydney, in 2017. Kristen Janssen Kim noted the scene in which John Milton, played by Lance Hendrickson, discusses taking advantage of aspiring actresses. The film's editor, Patrick Lessier, discussed those particular themes of Wes Craven's approach to them, saying of Hendrickson's character, Wes, I think, was very interested in the character and not, not necessarily the villain. He certainly is a villain, but a catalyst for the villain's motivation. He's really the spark of events, or retcon con that he is the spark for events in the entire series. And then not but a year after this, this uh, one of the people, Adam White, wrote that the film was an angry indictment of sexual misconduct in Hollywood, predatory men, and the ca casting couch. 
He noted several instances of transactional sex within the film, including the characters of Jennifer and Angel Angelina both making references to having sex in filmmakers in order to secure roles in the fictional stab film. And Carrie Fisher in a cameo role as a lookalike of Fisher herself claims that the role of Princess Leia in the Star Wars franchise was won by the one who slept with George Lucas. Uh, White also noted that Rose McGowan, who appeared in the first screen film, later accused Weinstein of raping her in a hotel room a year after the film was released. McGowan revealed in 2017 that she received a $100,000 settlement as a result of the action. And Emma Frazier for Sci-Fi Wire commented that throughout the series, the late Maureen is slut-shamed and victim-blamed. Frazier has also lamented the film's lack of exploration of these themes, stating that the film could have been fascinating to look at the crimes in this industry and the relationship horror has with sex, which... That's really an interesting way to kind of look at this, honestly, and it's really hard not to look at it that way after what happened with Harvey Weinstein, but um, I am glad to see that the Scream series kind of got away from that and kind of returned to form what made the Scream film so special with the, with the most recent films, but it's kind of hard not to notice there, and their attempts to try to satirize themselves. It says a lot when the scary movie, when scary movie, the Keenan Ivory Wayne's movie, did a much better job of making fun of itself, the Scream series, than the Scream series tried to make fun of itself. And that one was much more successful. It was kind of like the equivalent to Airplane. When that came out in 1980, it was supposed to satirize the whole thing of the disaster movie, and ended up being the thing that gave the disaster movie its last downward spiral before they stopped making them all together. So, uh, we'll eventually get to scary movie once we get to that, once we get later on into the summer, but, um, Bottom line here is that Scream 3 definitely is a very underwhelming film, especially compared to the first two movies. And, um, yeah, like I said, it's glad that, I'm glad they got, a, they got back on track with the most recent films because, man, this and Scream 4 were definitely not the ones that this series should be proud of at all. So, so yeah, that's Scream 3. Uh, disappointment to start the month off. And uh, here's another disappointment, uh, Gunshy. New York's most stressed out cop. Maybe you got that weird sleeping disease. Narco sleepy. Might have a chance with the city's most charming nurse. Where are you from? I don't know. Top of the morning to you. Oh. If the mafia's worst assassin. Put your hand on the table. I won't say it again. It's a paper. Let the neighbor go. Doesn't find him first. That's the guy who's going to kill me. You probably deranged the nut. Ah, but am I an attractive nut? Gun shy. Rated R. Funny thing, I had no idea Sandra Bullock was in this movie, and knowing that Sandra Bullock is one of the leading stars in your movie, and you don't have no idea what the hell this movie is, is not a very good sign, and she doesn't even appear on screen until over an hour, a half an hour into the movie. So, um, yeah, you can see why this one is not well known. They basically have a story here where Liam Neeson is an undercover DEA agent who almost gets killed, and to continue with his mission, he needs to attend group therapy. Um, you also have, to, like I said, Sandra Bullock, Oliver Platt is also in the film. Uh, the director of this is mostly known for directing episodes of 21 Jump Street and the spin-off series Booker. That was 10 years ago. You can kind of see where the problems of this movie start to take place. And like I said, if you have a movie in 2000 and Sandra Bullock is in it and you've never even heard of it, Sandra Bullock and Liam Neeson to boot... That's not a good thing for this movie, and this thing came and went. Nobody went to see this film. Nobody even knew it even existed, but um, it just was a mess on so many levels. It was uh, one of Sandra Bullock's earliest produced films she had under a company at the time, Fortis Films. But the humor overall just really... The movie does not know how to sell itself. It's mostly lowbrow comedy, basically associating itself with fart jokes and gay jokes, and it's trying to be a dark comedy, but it try it doesn't know the tone it wants to take with it. But you're wasting so much talent with this movie. The three stars alone, you know, Neeson, Bullock, Platt, uh, Taylor Negron is also in here. Michael Weatherly from NCIS, Mary McCormick, Mitch Pileggi, uh, uh Richard Chief from The Good Doctor. I mean, there are so many good names in this film. And then you just hit, but there's nothing to the story whatsoever. It's a boring film. It's not funny. It's not creative. It's not inventive. These people that are involved in this film, there's a way, way better than anything that this movie does. And you can see why they dumped this movie out because it was dead on arrival right from the get go. And it's a bad film. Avoid this one like the plague. Like, these people ought to be ashamed of themselves. Sandra Bullock ought to be ashamed of herself. Her name is all over this. And now I know why this movie doesn't exist this for a lot of people because it's not a very good film so um yeah so that's gun shy for you 
And so with that said, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. When we meet next time, we'll head to uh, February 11th. We'll have three notable films, including Danny Boyle's The Beach with Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, also the Nickelodeon movie Snow Day, and also Disney's The Tigger movie. So three films to look at next time, and we will delve into those on the next episode. But until then... Uh, thank you very much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the playlist on the next page, check out the previous episode. Also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. So with that said, I am off, I will see you guys next time, and until then, as always, take care.